The message of today, the title of it is Although I fall, I will rise again. Amen. Say that to seven people, hallelujah. Although I fall, I will rise again. Do it literally, hallelujah. Amen. Although I fall, I will rise again. life is designed that life has many ups and also many downs. Hallelujah. And then in times where we are up, others are down. In times where we are down, others are up. There is a tendency in life that when we fall, many look down on us. Hallelujah. Because of our fall, and therefore, every fall feels like a shame. And so the Lord has just given me a message to come and minister to people that are gathered here today. Maybe just one that says, I have fallen in many ways, in many flexible ways than one. And then in my fall, I feel like it is difficult to arise. It is difficult to stand up. Not because I do not want to stand up, but because sometimes the forces of one's fall, they are sometimes so strong that they can keep one under the bondage really of falling. As a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. I want us to visit his thoughts in prophecy. Chapter number 8, verse number 4. And then we're just going to try to struggle with the mindset that he expresses in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse number 4. And then if the Lord enables us really to struggle well with understanding it properly, then we are going to trust that although I fall, I will rise again. The Bible says in the New King James Version, Moreover, you shall say unto them. And this really was the burden of my heart also to bring for the service of today. Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise again? Will one turn away and not return? So, so actually here you see, Jeremiah is actually trying to go into the dictionary or into sort of our philosophy, our understanding of our falls. That's why he does not say, even though you fall, you will rise again. He is putting it in a question form, really, that uh, will they fall and not rise again? In other words, Jeremiah is asking a question, and this question really is rhetorical in nature, but there is struggle that is allowed for us to go through in terms of trying to answer this question. That when we fall, will, will we not rise up again? There are a number of things that are really at work to keep people from rising again. The first thing that is at work from keeping people from rising again it is the shame of what people will say. Maybe people have seen me in my fall, and then when I try to struggle really with rising up, what are the people going to say when I try to struggle and rise up? Amen. Because people sometimes have a tendency of thinking that when one has fallen, that one has done it intentionally. Uh, it does not mean if one else is not struggling in terms of rising, and they are just easy to rise, it does not mean that everybody is getting it easy to rise and to remain up. So that's why the question becomes, shall or will they fall and not rise up again? You know, sometimes I, I, I admire really how many people are able to stand in times of falling. And then also in times where others are trying to struggle to go up, others are still remaining on a plane where they are up. And while others are also ascending to go up, they still remain up. It's really 
really worth admiring. But, but more than admiring really people who are standing from one season to the next, it takes quite a lot of effort, a lot of struggle to, to, to recognize those that are really trying from the depth of their hearts and really the depth of their minds to rise up again when they have fallen. Because in every fall, really, there comes a lot of shame, there comes a lot of blame, there comes a lot of name that is lost, there comes a lot of reputation that is lost, there comes really a lot of dignity that is lost, a pride that is lost, there comes so many things that are being lost just within falling. So when the Bible says, will they fall and not rise up again? This really is a question that every person that feels like they have fallen, they must begin to ask of themselves. Will I fall and will I not rise up again? Let me really put it to you and try to make it so clear for us that it is so easy, so simple, so light to fall, but the rise is quite difficult. Just trying to get up out of something that one has fallen into easily. It is it's quite difficult. It is quite challenging. It is, it is, it is quite brain damaging. Sometimes it damages even the passion to want to be up like others. That's why in life we have many people that have given up and many people that have decided to say, I'm just going to remain where I'm at at life. I'm going to give up. I'm going to continue with a fallen life. And then the reason why they continue with a fallen life because it is so easy living your life being fallen. You feel like on the level where you are falling, there is nobody that blames you. There is nobody that speaks better about you because at that level, everybody is falling. Everybody feels pity for everybody. Everybody loves everybody because all of them on a high plane, they were hated. All of them trying to rise, they were hated. So when they fall, they all have to love one another. They all have to pity one another. They all have to be ashamed, you know, you know, take pride in one another. That's why you find many people say that when I go, I do not understand really the mystery of how when they go out of the church they find more love and then when they come into the church they find less love because everybody in the church is trying to stand and in their in their understanding of trying to stand they are trying to disown themselves and they are trying to cut themselves from those that have fallen that's why it looks like uh, everybody in the church has it all together everybody in church has not fallen before everybody in the church is all nice and all clean and all holy and all speaking in tongues and spirit filled and everybody hides their fallen hides their weaknesses and this you know uh, discharges themselves from others that are falling that's why those that are falling and they're looking at those that are rising particularly in the body of christ they feel like how come at the place and at the center of love do i find the least love because everybody is actually trying to hide their fall so when i fall and not get back up again we must be ready uh, brothers and sisters mothers and fathers that when we are going to rise up again we must be ready for the kind of con contamination and also the kind of contamination because what contamination does it contaminates the spirit when somebody begins to judge you it breaks you from the inside when somebody begins to look down on you it crushes you on the inside especially if it is somebody that you are most expecting love from so the question becomes, will they fall and not get back up again? Now, how do you explain to somebody that has seen you fall that I am trying to get back up again? How do you explain to them that, you know what, I am ashamed of the many things that I've done. I am ashamed of the, the lowest level that I've stood to. How do you explain? Because everybody just expects everybody to be so high and so in the spirit and so walking in glory and walking in power. That's why many a times you find believers that are mostly weak find their comfort from non-believers that are at their weakest because when you are a weak believer and you meet a weak non-believer, it's like all of both of you are in a plane or in a boat where you are trying to balance and not fall further. That's why both many people that are broken, they try to lift up one another. Will they fall and not get back up again? So this is a question that this morning I want to challenge your spirit with really. Will you fall and not get back up again? Will, will, will you fall and not get back up again? I know there are certain things that are in the closet. There are skeletons that, 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 that you know you might be afraid that they are going to come out anytime soon. Uh, uh, what if they know this side of me? What, what if they know what, what I do in the dark? What if they know 
what I do when I'm all alone, what if they know the devil that I'm undergoing mentally and psychologically and, and emotionally, what if they know the kind of, uh, you know, doubts and the kind of reasons and the kind of fears that I am filled with, I know I speak bold, I know I act courageous, I know I speak big and I act big and I declare big things, but uh, what, what, what if they come to knowing that my heart is fainted and that my mind is just so small and I'm, I'm not just big talk and this big walk and this giant that I declare and present myself to be. Of course it's necessary that one presents themselves to be bold and courageous because actually that is the foundation of our faith. But really in essence when you know that you are weakened, you are beginning to crumble and fall on the inside and everybody says you got it all together and everybody says oh I like the prayers that you're given, the preachings that you're giving. I like the way you're modeling and living your life. But all together you know you're falling apart. Now the question becomes when you are sitting alone, will I fall and not get back up again? There are spirits that everybody is fighting. There are there are, there are, you know, there are mindsets that everybody is, is fighting. There are feelings that everybody is struggling with. And sometimes you know, and in fact, not only sometimes, but most of the time, you know, those feelings, they overcome you. That's why sometimes we are, you know, we are consumed in the soil of negativity and we are consumed in the soil of arrogance and greed, not because we want to be negative at all, not because we want to be jealous at all, but because uh, of the defeat of the emotion. Sometimes you tell yourself, but, but come on, you have to be happy for the success that God is bringing in their lives. Their jealousy really, brothers and sisters, is not motivated by jealousy. It's not motivated by negative. It is motivated by the fact that I've been waiting for so long. God, how come me? you are just blessing those that are coming two minutes and they are two minutes in, they are two minutes out and you are blessing them so quickly and I've been in this, uh, in this, in this walk for about many hours already. I've been here for many days and for many weeks. I've been here for many months and I don't see your move. I've been here for seasons and years. I'm not seeing your move. But those that are only in it for seconds and minutes, they are quickly getting blessed. So actually, that in its entirety, it wants jealousy. So jealousy actually is the defeat of one trying to struggle and answer the question when they fall Amen. and not get back up again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Will they fall and not get back up again. Let us go to the second chapter. The book of Mika chapter number 7 verse number 8. I like it in the New Living Translation. The book of Micah or the book of Mika chapter number 7 and verse number 8. It reads in this translation that is in front of me, the New Living Translation, NLT. The Bible says, do not gloat over me, my enemies. There comes a time and a point in life where you have to declare it and be bold and speak to your enemies and say, do not gloat over me. Do not, do not, do not, do not laugh at me when I'm falling. When it looks all bad and I look all rotten and I look like uh, the one that God has not blessed and I look like, why did you have to go to church? Don't gloat at me. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to tell your mind, don't gloat at me. You have to tell your feelings, don't gloat at me. You have to tell the way things are happening and the way they are designed around you. Do not gloat at me. Listen to what it says. For though I fall, yet I will rise again. Amen. There comes a place in time and a place in the walk of life where one has to declare that although I fall, I will rise again. I know it is bad now. I know I look fallen now. I know I'm doing things in the dark now. I have skeleton. Oh my God, I have secrets that if you come out, you look at me and swear that I am the devil. But do not grow at me. For though I fall, I will rise up again. I do not become a devil because I like to. I do not become a demon because I like to. I do not become the because I like to be a bad boy and a bad girl. I did not become what I am now because it looks nice all together. I am what I am, but sometimes you get to a place where you hate what you become, but do not gloat at me. What we need in the church are people that will not gloat at another one. Amen. Oh my God. What do you do? What do you do when you come to the very place where you're supposed to get help? And before that help you get, or while you are getting that help, somebody behind you, everybody around you, they are just gloating at you. They are all acting holy around you. You feel like, God, these people are too holy to be in church. What we need is coating 
the church. The church is not for the holy, it is for the sinners. The reason why I am here, it is not because I'm holy, it's not even because I'm trying to get any holier, but it is because I understand that, that he understands my weakness, and when I am weak, he is strong to not create me. For though I fall, Everybody wants to rise, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Everybody wants to rise. I may take longer to rise, but it does not mean I do not want to rise. I may take longer to get it right, but it does not mean I don't want to get it right. I may take longer to cope and understand with and understand it, but it does not mean I do not want to cope and I do not want to understand. Though I fall, I will get back up again. And when I get back up again, I will dust myself. And, and all the names that I was called, oh my God, I will carry all of those names. I will, I will carry all of those shames. And I will carry all of those in and I will take them to the old letter cross of Jesus. What we need when people are persecuting you, when people are tiring you, when people are talking bad about you. What you just need to do, oh my God, get out of the zone of defending yourself. One of those days where we are trying to clean the story up, you know, we are trying to get into the washing machine, God. One of those days, what we just need to do is, when somebody says, I saw you do this, I know that you are like this, I know that you are like this, and he said, okay, this is what I am. Thank you for revealing what I am. Now I take this and I cast it unto Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says, cast all your heavy burdens unto me. What we need is brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, that will take all of the names they are called, that will take all the names they are given, that will take all the names that they have, and cast them to Jesus. Because although I fall, I will get back up again. Don't gloat at me. Think about your problems and say, don't gloat at me. Think about your personal, spiritual weakness and say, don't gloat at me. Think about the times where you are really trying to overcome the temptation and you knew you couldn't overcome it and so you gave in to the temptation and said do not gloat at me. Oh my God, sometimes the devil is a tendency of keeping and helping people up and agreeing. Why? Simply because God, the, the enemy uses guilt to gloat. The enemy uses guilt to gloat. So what you need to do is even the feeling of guiltiness, even that mindset of being guilty, take it and say, this is my cloak, this is my load, God, this is my burden, God, this is my heaviness. Now I cast it unto you. Do not cloak at me. The Bible calls it enemies. Oh my God. We never knew that we have enemies among the people that love us the most, among the people that are our encouragers, among the people that are our motivators. We did not know that we have enemies. If the Bible says, look cloak at me, comma, my enemies, what it means is those that are clothing at you, they are posing like enemies. Sometimes the enemy is not the one that hates you. It's not the one that says you are to you. It's not the one that is insulting you. It's not the one that holds your clothes and takes you to God. It's not the one that calls police for you. You know why? Because that one you already know. Oh my God, but what about a sister? What about a brother? What about somebody that you trusted so much? And while they are trying to encourage you in the process, you know that they are encouraging you. And this person is saying, you know, to always clean themselves with your story. They always feel bad about you, and they always think good testimonies of themselves. The Bible calls those enemies. Amen. Don't gloat at me. Amen. Don't gloat at me. Woo. Don't gloat at me. Amen. Don't ashamed me. Amen. I have fallen into fall. But all I'm prepared and all I understand is although I fall, Amen. I will get back up again. I will rise again. My fall is not permanent and my fall is not forever. It may take long, but it's not permanent. My fall may take long, but it is not permanent. I will rise up again. It may, it may seem permanent, but it is not. Let us go really to the next verse. The book of Proverbs chapter number 24 verse number 16. If I can get it in a new loving translation, not, I mean, in the NIV, New International Version. Proverbs chapter number 24, verse number 16. Although I fall, I will rise again. Although I fall, 
I will rise again. Although I fall, I will rise again. I read in the translation that is in front of me. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, For though the righteous does what? Falls seven times, they will rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. The Bible says, A righteous man, who told you I am not righteous in my fall? You know, the issue is we think righteousness is right doing. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Once you have declared and you have confessed Jesus as Christ, the Bible calls you the righteousness of God. So you may be doing certain things that seemingly prove that you are wicked. But if you have confessed Jesus as Christ, the Bible calls you righteous. Don't the righteous fall. They don't fall on you once. We have a tendency of thinking that right people, they get it all together. They, they are walking on water like Jesus Christ. Oh my God. But Peter was an expression of the church. It is not Jesus, the expression of the church. It is Peter, the expression of the church. So Peter took a step and took another. And then others, uh, different classes of theology might say that he took the third. And while he was about to take this one, he began to sink. So although a righteous man learns how to walk on water, they may take the first step and still be on water. And take the second step and still be on water. And take the third step and begin to sink. When I sink, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, don't think that I am wicked. A righteous man falls seven times, but in every fall, a righteous man rises up. Hallelujah. Though I fall, I will rise again. They fall seven times, they rise again. In other words, I'm here to say to you, if you fail once, try twice. If you fall once, stand up twice. If you fall seven times, on the eighth time, stand up. A righteous man falls seven times, but rises up again. And I will really tell you, strongest people are not those that are standing. They are not those that have never fallen before. The strongest people are those that when they fall down, they rise up again. Because it takes another level of strength to rise again. So I'm telling you, there are other people who are standing that are quite weaker than those that have fallen. Why? Because a righteous man, although he falls seven times, he rises up again. What needs to happen is, even in every situation, when you have fallen, please rise up again. Came with a message that beseeches you. I know I look ugly. I know I look guilty. I know uh, there's no form of innocence anymore in me. I have lost it all. But stay even so in that I will rise again. Amen. I don't rise because I'm innocent. Or I don't rise because I'm trying to prove to anybody. I am rising because I know my own struggle. Amen. What we need is brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers that understand that the journey of life is, is not corporate, it's personal. It may look like we are loving life for others, but we are actually loving it for ourselves. So when others are speaking, really their input is not amounting to anything in our lives. So after you have fallen, get back up again. I was reading in a book of uh, somewhere in the New Testament, it was saying Christianity is about minding your own business. I, I am busy minding your own business. I, I am busy minding my own problems. They are mine. If you have a chance of talking about them, well, you are wasting your time talking about my problems because they are mine. If I fall, I have fallen. And God knows that I have fallen. I don't need anybody to tell me that I have fallen. But the only thing that I need is a bunch of brothers and sisters that can help me to get back up again. Amen. Though I fall, I will rise up again. I will rise up again. I will rise up again. It may look like I have no hope, but I will rise. 
The book of Psalms, please. Chapter 37. Verse number 23 and verse number 24. Although I fall, I will rise up again. Although I fall, I will rise up again. Although I fall, I will rise up again. Psalms 37, verse number 23, and verse number 24. I'm going to read it in the English Standard Version. It says, The steps of a man, they are established by the Lord. When he delights in his way, though he falls, he shall not be casting headlong, for the Lord will uphold his head. The steps of a right man, they are ordered by the Lord. So God was ordering my fall. <clears throat> when I fell, it was because God was busy ordering my fall. God knew that I would stumble yesterday, so he allowed me to go to yesterday so that I stumble, so that today I can rise up and know that he is upholding me. God knew that my fall would not be something that I like, so he wanted me to tap into things that I don't like so that I really get to know who is holding me. It is not because I can. It is not because anybody can. It is only because he is upholding me. The steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. So when I stumble today and I fall, the Lord has an understanding and he has allowed not that he is the one causing me to fall, but he has allowed my fall so that out of the fall my rise must become stronger. Although I fall, yet I will rise up again. So one thing that we need to understand is sometimes God will allow you to go to things that in your heart and in your mind you don't want to go to because you know, oh my God, if I will go through that again, oh, I will not be able to survive. That's why David says, for even though I walk, to the very of the shadow of that I shall not fear only because you are with me. So he says what removes his fear for the very of the shadow of that is the fact that God is with him. But if God was not with him, when he was going to walk in the very of the shadow of that, he was going to die. So sometimes we need to understand that uh, the Lord is the one that is ordering the work of the righteous man. It may look like I'm collapsing. It may look like things are not going well for me. It may look like everything is just going wrong and, and the, the hand of the devil is at work and I'm cursed and you know, I'm bewitched and there are spells and enchantments that are being cast at me and somebody spoke against me and somebody did all of this against me and I have wronged against somebody and I'm sent in this area. But the steps of the righteous man, they are honored by the Lord. It may look like, you know, that there's somebody that I touched and that person began to reach no, it is an unbelieving curse upon me. That the steps of the righteous man they are honored by the Lord. If I fall, God knew about the fall, and God will prepare and order me out of my fall. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number eight. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number eight. Let us start the business of strings. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number eight. I read in the New International Version. We are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. The Bible says we are hard pressed on every side. We are pressed very hard on every side. When we go into the left, we are pressed. Forward, we are pressed. Behind, we are pressed. Towards the right, we are pressed on every side. And sometimes every pressing brings a breaking point. There comes a time in life where you are so much under pressure that you feel like, I'm going to break, I cannot carry this. But listen to what the Bible says. It says, but not crash. 
I'm pressed, I'm cracking, I am almost at my breaking point, but not crushed. Although we are pressed on every side. Brothers and sisters, when problems are pressing you on every side, make sure not to crash down. When problems are pressing you and they are cracking you and you feel like bones are about to break, you feel like ideas have ran out, money has ran out, love has ran out, you feel like hope has ran out, do not crash. There comes a place where the only thing that you must do is not to crash. Make sure you are not crashing. Make sure you are not turning into dust. Yes, you may turn into pieces, but make sure you are not going to turn into dust. Why? Because if you are able to turn into pieces, then you are able, when you are stronger again, to come back and pick up the pieces and move on. Amen. But make sure you are not going to turn into dust. We are pressed on every side. On this side, I have to deliver on the pressure of ministry. On this side, I have to deliver on the pressure of seminary. On this side, I have to deliver on the pressure of the family. On this side, I have to deliver on the pressure of the community. But even when you are under pressure, make sure, make sure that you are cracking and you are almost at a breaking point. And when you get to a place where you break, make sure you are not taking into dust. Don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. Yes, I know there is pressure everywhere. There is pressure everywhere. The money is not enough. The love is not enough. Even understanding is not enough. And the goals that are in front of you, there are too many. The money cannot afford it. The love cannot afford it. The strength and the passion cannot afford it. But there is one thing you must do. Do not crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. If you don't get the job, don't crash. If you are not accepted at university, don't crash. If you are not accepted at the college, do not crash. If you are not going to have a leadership, do not crash. If you remain unemployed, do not crash. If you do not have food, do not crash. If you don't have electricity, do not crash. If things are crashing, make sure that you are not crashing. Press on every side, but we are not crashed. The Bible says we are perplexed, but we do not despair. Some things are so confusing, they are so perplexing, and it seems like the perplexity leads to the perpetuality of the whole perplexity. But make sure that you do not despair. The word despair there, it means lose hope. When you are confused in times of confusion and, and struggle, make sure not to lose hope. I don't understand what is going on. The thing is so mixed up. Ideas are so, so much of a mess. I don't know what must I touch and what must I let go of. But do not lose hope. The Bible says, do not despair. Don't lose hope. Amen. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. You lost too much money to lose hope. You lost too much investment to lose hope. You lost too much time to lose hope. You are confused now. God, I know I've prayed. Oh my God, I've done everything in the realm of prayer to get answered. I don't know why my prayers are not answered. Yes, you may not have an understanding. You may not be knowledgeable. You may be confused. But make sure not to lose hope. Make sure not to lose hope. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 8, verse number 25, it says that hope that is seen is not hope. For hope always is uncertain. It is, we are seeing the things that are not really in our situation. I know I'm getting up. I don't know how, but I know that I'm getting up. I'm confused about the door. And it is, the room is so dark. And the room is so moisty. And the room is so much, uh, you know, it, it has so much of pain. You know, the room has so much, you know, it is just so much play. I cannot even see the door. I don't even know how I might, I might be able to walk towards the door that I cannot see. It's so confusing, but do not despair. Do not despair. Don't lose it. If you lost a family member, don't lose hope. Don't lose it. If you lose people in relationships, don't lose hope. Don't lose it. You already lost too much to lose the only thing that you have left. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. You may have broken promises and empty promises. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. 
Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading verse number 9. In other words, I'm just reading the next verse. I like it in the New Living Translation. Listen to what it says. It says, We are handed down, but we never abandon God. We are knocked down, but we are never destroyed. When life hunts you, when problems are hunting you, do not abandon God. When, when enemies are hunting you in dreams and they are hunting you in, in, in the day and they are hunting you in the night, don't abandon God. No matter what you are going to face and what you are going through and what is facing into your life, do not abandon God. Don't get to a place where you say, God, at this point in time, I am no longer continuing with you. Continue with God even though it seems difficult, even though it seems like you are hunted. The next part, it says, we are knocked down, but we are not destroyed. When you are not, get back up again. When you are not, get back up again. The strongest of boxes, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, is not the one that can knock the other one down. It's the one that gets knocked and is able to stand up again because they are able to understand that the punch on me was so hard, but I'm still getting up. The one who's punching does not know how, how hard it is to fall. But the one that is, that is punched and is down on the ground and wants to rise up again, oh my God. That one, that one understands how hard it is to be punched. So when you get knocked, when you get knocked, make sure you're not destroyed. Although I fall, I will get back up again. I may not be getting back on my feet, but to get up gradually, I will get back up again. We need to get back up again as difficult as it seems. As terrible as it is. Life is too long and yet too short to get out of it. It is too long. It is too long. That's why in, in, somewhere when I was reading in the Old Testament, I say, wake up. And if for the journey that you are about to take is too long, Wake up and take courage. You have feared the things in the past. But oh my God, when you are going to check within the ruler of your life, the amount of time you've lived out, you've lived out the, the smallest portion of your life. And that smallest portion might have felt like the longest portion of your life. Get back up again. The journey that you are about to take it is too long. Don't wait for others to come and revive you. Decide I'm going to walk even though I leap. I may not be able to run, but leaping is some sign that I'm busy making progress. I am busy moving from one block into another. I am busy moving from one state into another. Listen, the more you try to break free from this level of life and try to move on, life itself, it will prove to you that giving up is not worth it. The people you are going to meet in life are going to prove to you that giving up is not worth it. I know the people that you have met, they have proven to you that it is worth giving up. The situations you stumbled into, they have proven to you it is worth it to give up. But if you give up, the only thing that you know is the situation that you've been in. However, if you don't give up, you might know another situation. And that situation might prove to you that life is not worth giving up. There is so much more to life than just giving up. I'm telling you, there is so much more to our work with Christ than just abandoning God. Although I fall, I will get back up again. The book of Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near the broken hearted and saves those that are crushed in spirit. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. And the Lord saves those that are crushed in spirit. The Lord is near the broken. When your heart gets broken, God is growing, growing nearer. When your spirit gets crushed, God is growing nearer. I'm telling you, God is near the brokenhearted. In this month, we cannot promise absence of problems, but we can 
promise the presence of God in problems. When problems are becoming reinforced and they are breaking the heart and they are crushing the spirit, God will not leave you, nor will He forsake you. He is not to abandon you now. So, very, very, very of great diligence. Do not neglect God. Amen. Don't neglect Him. Don't neglect Him. Don't neglect Him. Verse number 19 says, For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. The Bible does not say there is no affliction when you are a right person. <coughs> but He said the Lord delivers them out of them all. You are going to be in debt, but the Lord to deliver you out of it, He will certainly deliver you out. Many are the problems, the afflictions, the persecutions, the you know, all the mis misery. Many are, you know, the, the aims of the righteous, many are the sicknesses, many, you know, are, 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 are the diseases and the viruses of the righteous, but out of them all the Lord delivers. When I fall into another problem, you will still get me out. I am in another one now. That's why I believe him because he has taken me out of others. We need to never say, stand and speak on this dimension. That I know I am in another problem now and it, and it is communicating a message of giving up. The problem tells me give up and give it all away. But I only have one issue. I have gone out of too many problems for me to know that he is going to get me out of this one. Amen. And because I have knowledge that he's going to get me out of this one, therefore, my conclusion becomes, I will not give up in the midst of the problem that I have now. Because the one that has delivered me will still deliver me. And already let me prepare for what is coming in the future. If in the future I fall into another problem, still I will continue worshipping and loving this God because if he delivers me out of the problem that I'm in now, he will still and certainly so deliver me out of the problem that is to come. Amen. Although I fall, I will rise up again. Romans chapter 16 verse number 20. Although I fall, I will rise up again. Although I fall, I will rise up again. 1620 of the book of Romans. The God of peace will crush Satan and place him under your feet. In the midst of your fall, in, in the midst of your trying to rise, you need to say, God, crush Satan and place him under my feet. Amen. God, these problems are too many. They are consuming me. These problems are overwhelming over. You know, they are taking over my, my, my entire shadow, my entire reality. God, crush Satan and place him under my feet. God, I have too many financial problems. I need you to crush others and place them under my feet. God, I am under too much uh, emotional and psychological mental strain. God, I need you to crush some of my stresses and place them under my feet. Soon, the God of peace will crush Satan Amen. and place him under your feet. Amen. The things you are crying over today, many, many days, if not many years from now, you are going to laugh over. The things you are struggling with, the things you are battling with, let me already tell you, for every mental, there must be a battle. If you are going to get a mental of success, then your battle is failure. If you are going to get a mental of anointing, then your mental is blindness and burning up. If you are going to get a mental of a generation, then your, 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 your battle really is fighting curses and fighting witchcraft. So for every mental, there must be a battle. But God crush Satan and place him under my feet. So while he is above me, while he is, he is seeming to be beyond me. I am already declaring it now. See that the God of peace soon is crushing you. Sickness, the God of peace is soon crushing you. Death, the God of peace is soon crushing you. No shock and death and, and, and you know, wrongs, the God of peace is soon crushing you. Poverty, the God of peace is soon crushing you. Frustration, depression, anxiety, the God of peace is soon crushing you and placing you under my feet. Crush Satan 
it and Lord and place him under my feet for though I fall I will get back up again I will get back up again I, I look like somebody who's not going to get back up but watch God help me up watch the Lord helping me up I look like somebody who does not have much on his name but watch what God is doing in rising watch what the Lord is doing in rising the book of Psalms 20 Chapter 20, verse number 7 and verse number 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 20, verse number 7 and verse number 8. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise and stand firm. Many trust in chariots and they trust in horses, but we trust in the Lord. Why? Because horses and chariots. They are all brought to their knees. Many are trusting in uh, what their money is able to do for them, what their beauty is able to do for them, what their education is able to do for them, what, you know, uh, everything that they have acquired by themselves is able to do for them. But there is one thing that I trust in. I trust in the Lord. And while their education gets weak and while, you know, their finances, they are able to run out, there is one that does not run out. We call him the voice of God. He is not running out. He is able to supply all my needs. All my needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. Though I fall. And it may look like I'm walking next to people that are running on chariots. And you know, people might be way ahead of you. Running on chariots and running on horses and running on camels. And, and, and it may look like life is way behind for you. God, I'm this age and I didn't yet have this. Who told you that God delivers things in that age? Amen. Who told you marriage comes when you are before when you are younger than 30? Amen. Although I walk on feet, there is a God that I trust. It may not come for me now, but certainly when it comes, I will rise up again. Amen. I will rise up again. I will rise up again. I will rise up again. Psalms 30, 138, verse number 8. Our second last scripture. Psalms 138, verse number 8. Verse number 8. It says this. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, and yours forever. The Lord will work out His plan for my life. The Lord will work out His plan for my life. The Lord will work out His plan for my life. Things may not be working out for me, but as a God that is able to work out His plan for my life. I remember in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. The Lord has a future in store for you. The Lord has a future in store for you. He has a destiny ahead of you. Your plans may be failing. Your plans may be crumbling and falling apart. And it may look like uh, loose ends are not tying. It may look like you know chains are not gathering. It may look like things are not adding up. And we may be living in the shackles of fear. In the shackles of bondage and we may be living in weakness and asking why am i planning this and this is all failing i am planning something big and it ends up small i am planning something great and it ends up you know uh, dismantled i am planning something so bright and it ends up so dull but the lord will work out his plan for me the lord will work out his plan for me my family is falling apart but the lord will work out his plan for my family the Lord will work out his plan for my children. The Lord will work out his plan for every member of my house. We may be in a house where everybody is unemployed and you know, there is no dream. Nobody has a dream. Nobody has a vision. Nobody has passion. Nobody, you know, uh, nobody is, is burning for anything. Nobody wants to accomplish something because and everybody might be judging and saying, ah, in that house, nobody wants to dream. Ah, in that house, everybody just wants to drink. Ah, in that house, this is what is happening. But the Lord will cause his plan to work out for me. One last verse. 
Isaiah 16 verse 1. Isaiah 16 verse 1. Hey, I'm going to 